Uh, the way the schedule is going to work today, Kurt's on a, you know, they were in California yesterday at Kwamba. They're here today, then they fly right back down to California. And so it's, you know, early mornings and late nights. So we want to, we want to, uh, uh, not burn him out. So we're going to do about a half hour of talking and then there'll be a little break. And then he's going to play and talk for a half hour and, uh, and we'll go with that. And which is going to be great. And then if anything else happens, that's fine too. So, I don't think I need to introduce him, but this is Kurt Rosenwinkel. So this is one of the jazz conversations, and, and uh, I, I have I wrote down a ton of questions, and uh, I, I I guess I'll, I'll just start with the questions, and, and if we move through them, or if, uh, if you want to answer some other question, just answer that question without me asking. <laughs> okay. okay. So if you just wanted to talk, I could talk. So uh, let me just say, well, let me start with this. Uh, when did you start? Uh, I started playing guitar when I was 12 and playing piano when I was 9. Uh, yeah. Formal training? No, no, I wouldn't say that. More like pretending to play Kiss. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. And then um, playing along to Beatles records and stuff like that. Plugging the guitar into the stereo and playing along with the records. Did you ever actually like plug the guitar into the? I used to have to plug it. I'm older. Plug a quarter inch, and then the quarter inch had the sixteenth inch, and you can actually subvert the record. <laughs> uh, well, our record player was old enough that it had quarter inch inputs. Actually. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, that I had a. There was a quarter inch input, so I could just plug the guitar right into it and and play along through the speakers. It was great. So did you have some early teachers on the guitar or piano or was yeah, it all self-taught? Yeah, um, I did. Um, I guess I did have formal training in that way in the sense that I had a, a teacher. Um, I took guitar lessons. There was a great um, guy named Bob Zatzman in my, um, in my uh, childhood when I was growing up and he was uh, you know, he taught all the kids guitar, and he had a uh, music shop, and he was really, really helpful for all of us. And me and my best friend Gordon would uh, always, you know, go up to his shop and, you know, try to buy a microphone and stuff. And he was always like trying to give us free stuff. He, he, always, he, he always had these deals. He was like, oh, oh, well, if you get a pick, that means you get this magazine for free, and if you get the magazine for free, that means that we have this deal with that, that you get an extra guitar chord. Wow. You know, so he was always like giving away stuff, you know. And uh, so we had a really uh, great childhood in that regard because um, a lot of people, a lot of kids doing music and, um, you know, and Bob was, was such a supporter and he gave uh, tons of enthusiasm for music, you know, so he was a really important person. Right. You know? right. Yeah. And did he teach you as well, or he, did he just sort of... Yeah, he taught me like Alice's, rest you Alice's Restaurant right. and, you know, things like that. So the other stuff you sort of started picking up on your own and sort of deciphering. Yeah, I mean, I was just playing along to records and, um, you know, writing songs. I was always writing songs from the very beginning, you know. Me and Gordon had bands, you know, and uh, when I was... Uh, playing piano. I mean, I was kind of playing piano all along, but when I started with piano, we had a band, piano and drums, and we would make concerts for the neighborhood and stuff like that. Go to door, door to door, and, you know, sell tickets to the, wow. for a dollar. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were really serious. We were practicing two hours a day together, and uh, we were best friends. We did everything together. There was It was just an extension of other things that we would play, like pretend to be archaeologists or whatever, climbing Mount Everest or being boxers or something and setting up a boxing rink in his room or something like that, or being, uh, you know, bartenders and going to get the colored sodas and mixing them all together, you know, or being scientists and pouring rubbing alcohol on his uh, wooden dresser and lighting it on fire. <laughs> that wasn't so smart, but... Uh, <laughs> And then, you know, music was uh, also another one of the things that we would do, nice. just like in that way of just playing, you know. Nice. So it kind of, that became 
the thing that we wanted to do the most. So we just kept doing that, you know. And that led into. He's he's still a drummer. He's a good drummer. He's, he plays with the orchestra, which used to be ELO. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. So he tours around and plays drums with the orchestra. Nice. Yeah. That's that's good. That's that's good. Okay. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. So he's done well. He's yeah. Done better than most. Uh, when did you decide you wanted to be a musician? I mean, was that just right out of that before, in high school? Yeah. No, it was. It was. Earlier. It was before. I, it was before we even started playing instruments. We were pretending to play. Yeah. Did you ever played like broom? Yeah, we we did the tennis racket. tennis racket. I played thing, tennis yeah. racket and broom. We really did that up to do that hardcore. We were like bass on the broom. Very serious about longer. that stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah, the bass. Well, the bass on broom. the broom. Yeah. Yeah, because it's longer. Yeah. Like, but this is like I was watching Paul Revere and the Raiders. This is what before you guys were. We had the uh, screwdriver as the microphone taped onto like a wow. stick. You know. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I, and I knew then. I knew then. I was. I was like, this is. This yeah, is this what I'm going exactly. to do. I know. Did you ever look in the mirror? I guess it's <laughs> a real question. Did huh? you ever stand in front of the mirror and do that? Oh, totally. Yeah. Exactly. That was the place. Yeah. <laughs> no, I know. That's exactly. What we I were did. dressing up like Kiss every weekend. You know. <laughs> <laughs> we built the Love Gun stage. Wow. <laughs> okay. We put so, like blocks on our shoes and incense. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Because we were, you were, uh, you were very serious, serious. You were ambitious you were very serious. and, and, uh, and uh, enterprising. Yeah. Um, so uh, this is uh, great stuff. Uh, um, <laughs> I've got some, I've got good questions for you. I, so I told these to people, and, and Already, I they take questions. Like you have. No, no, that's good because uh, they think they want to know. Uh, okay, what have music and the guitar meant in your life? Uh, I know it's everything, you know. Everything. Yeah. <laughs> you ask him if he played played the tennis racket, you get ten minutes. You ask him what music has meant his life. No, no, I, I, I just, if you, and you don't have to answer that. You can think about it, or I don't know if you know if you had some philosophical thing. No, not just really. uh, <laughs> it's just everything. I mean, I was really obsessed. You know, I guess I still am, but yeah. not really as as. Uh, I'm more, I'm more, uh, I guess, diversified or mellow or older, you know. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I was, I've just been hardcore obsessed with music my whole life. So, I mean, when, when, when would, I mean, could you give me your first music memory? I just did. I mean, like, like oh, like, like, like really first? Five or four, oh, that, that. Like, remember being like, uh, I, mean, I remember being in preschool here in Camp Town races and playing it over and over again. Yeah. I just remember hearing my father playing piano downstairs when I was lying in bed. And uh, he improvises, so he, he has his own music. Um, so I just, I guess that's my earliest memory is just hearing him play piano. Just hearing it around the house. Yeah. His music. His music, yeah. Nice. Um, I, I like to ask this question. Uh, you know the scene in Spinal Tap where they ask uh, whoever it is. Have you you've seen Spinal Tap? Yeah. And they ask Nigel Tufnell, whoever it is, what else would you have done? And he says, I could sell hats. <laughs> yeah. I think we have that in the brown. Are you seven and three quarters? I, I think I could have sold hats. So I want to ask you, what else would you have ever done if you had? I could sell hats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we have it in black. Would you like a different color, sir? Yeah. I think we have that in your size. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, did you, you didn't think you didn't go further with the archaeologist, the mountain climber? No, I never ever thought of doing anything else ever. That's great. Much to my father's chagrin. What did he do? Should I ask? Well, he's an architect. Ah. And but you know, he. Uh, you know, he wanted to, you know, for his children to, you know, get a college education, and, and uh, so he, you know, he was real serious about education, and, um, you know, I was so much into guitar that I was really falling behind in my normal studies, you know, at school. I was in kind of like a, um, a good school, a public school, but good, you know, like a magnet school right. for, like, smart people. And um, 
you know, advanced math and science stuff. And I started just failing out of that stuff because, because I was just spending all my time doing music. And uh, so, you know, during my teenage years, I was uh, definitely, uh, you know, I had conflict with my father because of that. You know, he tried to take my guitar away from me, which was just an absolute red line. I just went <laughs> ballistic, you know. Um, so, but, but now he, uh, you know, now it's all in perspective, I guess, about, about, you know, now he's relieved that I actually have a, an actual job and, you know, a life in music and all that stuff. He's, he's proud about how it turned out. But at the moment, he was like, oh my God, what is he doing? He's, you know, you know, throwing his life away or whatever. I don't know what he was thinking, but anyway. <laughs> Dad, if you're listening, <laughs> don't listen. He can get his podcast. He can send in the podcast. Well, that takes me to uh, actually a story uh, that I will keep short, but about 20 years ago, Ken Ehrlich's not here, is he? About 20 years ago, I asked, did you know Ken Ehrlich? I, yeah. 20 years here? ago, well, 20 years ago, he was a student of mine. And we were walking right through Evans there, right through the hallway, and he had just taken his first lesson. He could play this kind of cool thing in C minor. And I, and I swear to God, I worked with him four years, and I think after four years, he could still play this cool thing in C minor. And, and uh, he was in a popular group uh, called Colobo. And uh, he said, uh, and we were walking through there, so this, uh, this I don't know, he, he's probably your age? So he's, yeah, yeah, he's same my age. You? Yeah, same so age. this would have been like uh, 20, you would have been if, if you were going if you're in college or whatever, 21, two years ago. 20, yeah, 22 years ago. 22 years ago. So I'm walking the hall with Ken Like he's taking a couple lessons from me, and uh, he says, uh, you know, Kurt Rosenwinkel went to my high school, and I said, who? And he said, Kurt Rosenwinkel. He's going to be like the best guitar player in the world. <laughs> and I said, of course, you're already studying with the best guitar player in the world. Anyway, and so then I sort of was keeping my eye out for you ever since then. Wow. And so, and so I was like, okay, and then, you know, then early, I heard about you early on a little bit, and then, you know, see your name, and then, and then, this came to discover your music, and I was, uh, 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 I don't want to say exactly that uh, he is right, because we don't want to ever say that. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but he, he was certainly ahead of the game on that one. Uh, so that makes me. Is of, he? He's in Portland somewhere. Here or? No, no. Uh -huh. He's just. But he was a student of mine, and he lives in town. I think he manages hip hop bands. Really? Yeah. Uh, he was always a really cool guy. He is a good guy. He was yeah. a fun student to have. And then he was in a kind of popular, kind of uh, young people kind of band, you know, yeah. kind of kind okay. hippie rock. Yeah. Share a little one. Spaghetti dance. Yeah. You know. The noodle dance. <laughs> yeah. Let's not go with it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, he remembered you, and he told me about you. When he was well, eighteen, in the I know. Yeah. yeah, right. So, so, so I, so I, so this is uh, very uh, serendipitous. It's the kind of things you learn when you have uh, conversations. Right. So it's not so bad. <laughs> it's not so bad so far. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So high school, we went through high school, kind of arts magnet high school. Yeah. And, and yeah. I dropped out of that that school and I went to the arts school and I was uh, there with Joey DeFrancesco actually. Ah. Ah. And Chris McBride. Wow. And, and Amir Thompson Questlove. We had a band together. Yeah. Yeah, that would be a good band. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, not all four of us at the same time, but me and me and uh, Amir uh -huh. had a band together. Nice, with other people. Nice. Uh, so, did you go to college? Yeah, I went to Berkeley College of Music. And how long did you go? Two years. Two years. Yeah. Uh, and uh, how, how was that? It was good. Uh, I met a lot of really great people and uh, got a lot of experience playing and yeah had some good classes with some good teachers and you know it was it was great um uh okay so then here's a question that is maybe unanswerable uh but i wrote it down anyhow um when do you feel like, you know, you sort of started to develop your unique voice and style? And I don't mean just voice, voice, but I'm just, you know, when did you, I mean, did you feel like you always sort of sounded different than everybody? Or if, if you said, oh, if you heard me when I was 18, I sounded just like Pat Martino or, you know, or some other guy that was a hero. Or did you always feel like you were headed in your own direction? Um, I mean, I think I always, I never really asked that question, you know, um, but I, 
I mean, I was always writing songs, you know, so you don't really seek, you know, to find a, your own voice if you're, if you're writing a song. You just write a song, kind of, in my experience. Um, uh, but if I look back on my guitar playing, I think that there was definitely some, some phases where I was heavily influenced by certain people, you know, like I think at some points, you know, I think there was a lot of Schofield or Metheny in my playing, you know, when I was a teenager. Um, so, I'm not really sure exactly, but I didn't think that then, you know, um, I just wanted to play music and was, you know, doing it the way that I could at that moment. And um, so I don't, I'm not sure really, uh, you know, I didn't really have any conscious thought about developing my own voice or anything like that, you know, I just wanted to play good music. I heard a quote from, and this sort of reminds me of, I heard a quote from uh, Charlie Bird, the guitar player. I don't know if he said this, but somebody said, or I, somehow it was attributed to him, if you want to be an innovator, you know, if you want to be an original or innovator, and you're not going to be, you know, you're, you're not, and it, you can't not be one if you are going to be one, and you can't be one if you're not going to be one. Like, basically, he said, you can't sort of say, I'm going to be different, you sort of are different, and you're going to follow that path. I don't know. I mean, it seemed. I, I guess it, you know. So, so what you're saying is you never even thought about it, and yet that was sort of the result. Yeah. And that sort of follows this quote, which is. Yeah. The, you know, it's sort of you got it in you, or it's part of you, or it's not. Yeah. I mean, I kind of look at it like everybody's different, and everybody's unique, and you know, instead of trying to develop your own voice, just just recognize that you already do have your own voice, and instead of trying to focus on that aspect of things, just try to uh, just focus on music and and then, you know, whatever flaws are in the music, that's your voice, you know. So what Picasso said, he said, uh, don't worry about, um, you know, drawing a, uh, you know, finding your own voice, just try to draw a perfect circle. And since no one can draw a perfect circle, like, it's, it's, the, uh, it's the flaws in it, really, that that, you know, identify our voice, you know, so I think it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's wasted time to think about developing your voice. I think you just, just focus on music and, and play, you know. I don't care about having my own voice. Just want to play in the best way I can, right. you know. Uh, that's great. Thank you. Uh, artists you've admired and played with, influences, any, any guys that like when you were coming up uh, that you were like, oh, and that, or, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, Joe Henderson, you know, um, uh, is always a huge inspiration to me, and I had the chance to play with him and do some touring with his band, uh, and that was amazing and frustrating <laughs> because the drummers weren't very good um, but uh, but it was that was that was a really incredible time and I was in Paul motion's band for 10 years that was, that was you know I learned a lot <clears throat> being in his band and uh, uh, you know there's a lot of people that I've played with that, uh, that I that mean a lot to me, you know. Uh, those are some of the more well-known people, you know, but, uh, you know, the guys I'm playing with now, I mean, they're just, you know, magnificent musicians, and they, you know, I'm learning, it's, I'm learning tons, you know, playing with them, totally inspiring, and, uh, you know, they're as heavy as anybody that you would ever want to play with, you know, be they, you know, famous or, or not. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, uh, and you can take this any way you want. Uh, current guitarists of interest? I mean, we've been talking not, not so much about our guitarists. Uh, I mean, you mentioned Schofield and, and, uh, and uh, Metheny has early influences. Uh, anyone or anything you listen to, or do you try to just uh, 
you know, try not to listen to a bunch of people, try not to keep up, or is it like, oh, I heard this cat and I loved him, or I don't, I'm not that interested? In oh that. yeah, like uh, new guys coming yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, you know, if that's a you know, there's a whole um, there's a bunch of there's a whole fleet, you yeah. know, of, right. of cats yeah. coming up now. Um, I like a lot of them. Uh, you know, Lage Lund, is, yeah. he really stands out. Yeah. Uh, he's a really fantastic player. Um, yeah, um, you know, um, hmm. Uh, let me think. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to. Yeah. We don't have to worry, we don't have to worry about this. Yeah, he's, you know, Lage was he's really, he's, he's my favorite, I think, of young guys, you know. Right. But, um, yeah. Yeah, he's a great player. Um, you know, Kreisberg, he's he's good. Yeah. Uh, Moreno, he's, he's really good, too. Mike Moreno, yeah. Uh, Nier Felder, I like. You know. I don't know who is that? His name is Nier, N-I-R, uh -huh. Felder. Is he European or is he? European? No, I, I don't know where he's from, but he's, he's in New York. And uh, I heard him once a long time ago, and, and he really impressed me. Uh, now he's got his own bands and stuff, and um, and yeah, he's a he's a great player. I'm not sure which direction he's taking, but uh, yeah, he's a he's a really great improviser. Um, yeah, for sure. There was this other guy that I heard in New York, but I don't remember his name, so it's not that useful. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but I mean, I, yeah. Is there, are there any other guitar? I think that's all the guitar players in New York. Um, uh, Oh, well, that's great. That's just, you know, something that's interesting, because my friend Mark Seals, who's a good pianist, runs the program at the University of Washington, he once said to me, uh, you know, I don't really listen to anybody else anymore. He goes, I, if I want to hear some piano playing, I'll do it. Which is interesting. I mean, he's not saying it as a, I don't, he's, and I, and, and I, and I and somewhat, I mean, he's not saying it like he's better than anybody else. He's just saying uh, he's playing the way he wants to hear it. And it's a very interesting concept. I mean, I can, I can see his point. I mean, it's not my opinion. Right, but I can see, I can see a little bit where he's coming from. So I just sort of wondered if you were like, oh, I'm just, you know, or but you're more like, oh, well, I hear stuff and I like it. I listen to a lot of a, a lot of music. Um, I also listen to the stuff I'm working on a lot. I probably listen to that more than anything else, just because I'm working on it, and trying to understand it, and move it forward. Um, but uh, you know, I love listening to music. Uh, yeah. Um, so that that uh, that brought me to what I was thinking about next. Next, you've said you've been composing all your life, and that was sort of a big way that your yeah. music got developed and your voice got developed because you were sort of following this music you were inviting. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, can you tell us a little bit about the you know the compositional process? Or the, I mean, do you write on the piano, write on the guitar, write the chords, write the melody? Um, yeah, I write um, a lot on piano. Um, I write on guitar. Uh, and I write uh, using the computer, um, which is uh, a great way to write because you can uh, improvise and then capture that and then work with it. You know, if you you know if you have a, like a MIDI keyboard, and you get a good sound, Rhodes or something like that, and then you improvise, then you can. Uh, you know, record that and then find something that's good in there and then take it and work with it. You know, and so you play, play, that play, into the, play into the computer and then look at it. <laughs> yeah, play into the computer and then, um, you know, I'll just like improvise for like 20 minutes or something like that and then go back and listen to it and then maybe find a, something that, you know, feels like it's uh, interesting and could be like a section, cuts on the compositional, you know, right. and then 